is about the Filt Amp Module 1006, which is part of the Behringer ARP 2500 series. It combines a low-pass filter and an amplifier, both voltage controllable, and shares this dual functionality with the Mod Amp module that I reviewed in the last video, which combines a ring modulator and a VCA. The Filt Amp represents a standard combination of two crucial functions, filter and amplifier, that we find in this arrangement in nearly every subtractive synthesizer. Before we go into the details of this module, let's have a brief look into filtering in general. Filters are essential for coffee preparation, as they are for subtractive synthesis. Actually, filters are often the signature components that define the unique sound of a synthesizer. There are many different filters out there, low pass, high pass, two pole, four pole, transistor, diode and more. I will limit this to low pass filters here, since this is the filter type that is included in the filter module. A low pass filter lets low frequencies pass through and filters out higher ones. To demonstrate this, I have set up a simple sound from two sine waves. One at 220Hz, which we hear on the left side now and we see it in green on the scope and another sine wave with 880Hz, which we hear on the right side and we see it in red. The high pitch sine has now 4 times the frequency of the lower one, so these sine waves are 2 octaves apart, since um, the frequency doubles with every octave. The low pitch sine is an A3 and the higher one is an A5 on the scale. Now let's mix these two together. This now doesn't look like a sine wave anymore, however in the frequency spectrum we still find exactly the two peaks at 220 and 880 Hz. Well, in fact we see some additional small peaks in the spectrum, because my sine waves are not perfect and have a low amount of harmonics in them. But let's neglect this for now. The mix already goes through the filter amp filter, but it's fully open so that it lets all frequencies pass through. Now let's slowly close the filter. We now see a significant drop in the higher frequency peak, so the filter starts to filter that out. And we also hear that the sound becomes lower since only the lower sine wave passes through the filter unattenuated. And if we close the filter further, also the lower frequency starts to fade. The filter tuning knob therefore seems to adjust the point in the frequency spectrum from where all the higher frequencies get um, filtered out. In more detail, every filter has a filter curve. For low pass filters it looks like this and it describes the amount of attenuation over the frequency range. Starting at the left we have a plateau in the filter curve where frequencies pass through without attenuation. Then we reach this bend in the curve called the cutoff frequency from where all the higher frequencies are faded out gradually. The cutoff frequency is adjustable in most filters and we can adjust it either with a knob or a control voltage and most often with both of them. If we reduce the cutoff frequency, the output sound becomes uh, lower and duller since it loses its higher frequencies. And opening the filter means that we receive a brighter sound as more of the higher frequencies can pass through. And this becomes very clear with a more complex waveform like a saw wave. The slope of the filter curve is determined by the number of filter poles, and these poles are the roots of the filter transfer function denominator. But let's leave this for the control theory lecture. Let's just remember that every filter pole adds another minus 6 decibel per octave to the slope of the filter curve. A one pole filter therefore has a slope of minus 6 decibel per octave. This means that above the cutoff frequency, so within this uh, slope range, a frequency which is one octave higher than another one will be 6 decibel quieter in the output of the filter. One pole filters are quite uncommon, at least in low pass configuration, as their filtering is not very precise. The MS20 for example has a one pole high pass filter and the A108 and A123 modules from Döpfer also offer 6 decibel per octave outputs. 
If we add one pole to the filter, we receive a two pole filter that has a 12 decibel per octave slope, so it cuts away the higher frequencies a bit more aggressively compared to the one pole filter. Two pole filters are very common. The MS20 has one as the low pass. The ARP Odyssey Revision 1 filter is also a two pole filter. The Behringer Neutron has one. And also the ARP 2500 multimode filter is a two pole filter, only to name a few of them. Then there is the three pole filter, which has an 18 decibel per octave slope and is again a bit more uncommon. But the famous Roland TB303 had one, and also the Döpfer A103 module offers us an 18 dB per octave filter. The four pole filter is very common and has a 24 decibel per octave slope. We find it in the famous Minimoke, the ARP Odyssey Revision 2 and 3, the Roland System 100M, and also in the filter module. Then there are some filters with more than four poles, like uh, some that have even eight poles, which gives a 48 decibel per octave slope. And again, these filters are a bit more uncommon and often they lose a bit of character as they cut away the higher frequencies very aggressively. So we typically use them to precisely cut away disturbing frequencies, like clock noise, for example, that we don't want to have in our output sound. If we look again at the two sine wave example from the beginning, we see that the upper peak in the spectrum now is reduced by quite exactly 48 decibel compared to the lower peak. And since the two frequencies are two octaves apart and the fit and filter slope is 24 decibel per octave, this is all correct and as we would expect from the theory. The whole concept of removing a certain amount of frequencies and overtones gave subtractive synthesis its name. It starts with a rich, characterful sound like a saw or a square wave, which both have many harmonic frequencies, and then a filter subtracts an adjustable portion of these harmonics to shape the sound. Which filter you prefer obviously depends on your personal taste. For bass lines I prefer 4-pole filters as they add a bit more punch to the sound, and for lead or pad sounds I usually prefer 2-pole filters. about filter resonance before we come back to the filt amp. Most filters have a knob for this resonance, often it's called res, reso or q. On the MS20 it's peak, on the Model D it's emphasis, and the ARP2500 doesn't deal with nebulous abbreviations and just calls it by its name. Resonance is achieved by a feedback of the filter output to its input, which is often internally routed through an attenuator or an adjustable amplifier, and sometimes it's voltage controlled. An increased resonance lifts a certain part of the filter curve around the cutoff frequency and boosts all the frequencies in this area. At full resonance setting, filters often self-oscillate, so they become a sine wave oscillator and output their own sound even without any input. Resonance adds a lot of character to the filter output and it depends on the filter topology and the actual circuitry on how this resonance sounds. Perhaps it's now time to switch to the initial purpose of this video and have a look at the FiltM module. The filter part is a 24 decibel 4 pole low pass filter in transistor ladder design, so it's comparable to the Minimoke filter at least for its topology. We have two audio inputs here, both with an attenuator, and they are mixed together before they enter the filter section. Then we have three CV inputs here. The first one is the keyboard CV input, which goes through the green attenuator onto the filter cutoff and allows a one volt per octave tracking when we set the attenuator to the fully clockwise position. These two additional CV inputs can be freely distributed to the filter cutoff and the amplifier gain. And we have these four attenuators here to choose the amount of modulation uh, that goes to the cutoff frequency or to the amplifier. This is the audio output of the module, which is actually the output of the amplifier. The audio path is fixed in this module, so our sound always goes through the filter and then through the amplifier. And we cannot disconnect them and use them um, as standalone components. This switch here sets the amplifier response between exponential and linear, however, the filter amp is not suited for DC signal processing, as the filter is AC coupled and pulls constant voltages back to zero. 
This left big knob is the manual filter cutoff control, which is internally summed together with the CV inputs. This control in the middle here is the manual resonance control, and there is no CV input for the resonance. And finally, here to the right, we have the manual amplifier gain control, which again is internally summed together with the CV inputs. This is the basic outline of the filter module. Now let's listen to some simple filter sweeps to get an impression of its character. I haven't discussed the amplifier in more detail, however, it simply does what an amplifier should do. Some amplifiers can be overdriven and then they add some of their own character to the sound, but this here doesn't and we cannot overdrive it, since the filter will start to saturate before the amplifier does. However, one thing you will probably notice is that this amplifier is particularly noisy especially if we use CVs to control it. I don't know if this noise comes from the filter circuit or from the amplifier circuit, and I also don't know if this was an issue with the original modules, but I guess um, synthesizers from the time where the ARP 2500 was actually produced were even much more noisy than the systems we have today. The overall quality of this module is okay and all the controls have a nice feeling and the spacing is very good so it's not too fiddly to operate. It has a very unique design with this simplified circuit printed on the front plate but of course this does not only have a design background it also helps us to quickly identify which inputs go to which part of the internal circuits. One has to get used to the arrangement of these colored attenuators, especially since the attenuator for input B is above the one for input A. But this follows the original, however the original module had four audio inputs. Um, but these original modules were much larger, so Behringer had to find a compromise to fit them into the Eurorack format. That's it from my side regarding the filter module. If you're interested, have a look at a quick impro that I recorded with it. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.